now uh, I'm the pleasure to introduce the, our keynote speaker, the second keynote speaker in this opening uh, activity. Uh, it's an honor to me to present uh, Professor Jin Yeo Tso. I suppose I pronounce it a good way. And uh, Jin, Jin is uh, the Raymond Hugh Professor of Architecture in the Department of Architecture and Civil Engineering of the City University of Hong Kong. Uh, where he, uh, he's uh, the Emeritus Professor of Architecture uh, at the School of Architecture of uh, the Ch China's uh, University of Hong Kong. Uh, he's the founder uh, and the founding director of the Center uh, for Housing Innovation, uh, the, the, the senior fellow of the Architectural Society uh, of China, and he takes part also as the board uh, of directors and chairman of the China Green Buildings uh, Hong Kong uh, Council, uh, where he, he's the director of the board of certification. Uh, and he's also take part of the board of director of International Society for Computing and Civil uh, and Building uh, Engineer. So, um, he received the Sasada Howard by the Association for the Compute Aid Architectural Design Research in Asia. And, well, uh, to, to, to us it's very, it's very, very it's an honor because you also um, take part of the HIFU uh, network, so uh, thanks a lot, so uh, Yin to, uh, to be with us, and it's up to you to, f to start your uh, intervention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. Uh, hello, iPhone friends, and uh, it's so happy to be able to uh, meet with all of you and uh, uh, through the, the Zoom. And I apologize because the quarantine travel requirement of uh, issued by the Hong Kong government, so uh, it's very difficult for me to travel. If I haven't been traveled for two years already, so originally I think I can uh, break the norm, and uh, but this time still cannot. So thank you for having me today. So. I think I will use the uh, next uh, um, yes, here. Okay, I can show it. Okay, so I go to the top. Okay, I will use the next. Uh, I need to go to it. Sorry, I need to go to that first slide. Okay. Okay, I think everybody should be able to see it. And uh, I will use the next 40 minutes, I think, to introduce some of the work and happen at uh, another part of the earth, that means at the, at the Hong Kong as the center, and uh, we have a Greater Bay Area and also nearby. So talking about some of the urban issue and also uh, how do we encounter the different kind of challenges by adopting a kind of uh, approach, uh, data driven. Okay, I think that's, uh, that's uh, the, the term, uh, but uh, I want to demonstrate and uh, how do we do it and what kind of research has happened here. And uh, before I start, I need to also apologize because the time limit for me to prepare the talk this time. So I have some slides, I cannot complete the translation, but I think all the content is very graphical. So I will uh, explain that and uh, when we go through the slide. So today, I think mainly I will uh, give the first the background and uh, why we want to go for uh, why we, what kind of challenging we have here. And uh, on the same time, talk about using Hong Kong as an example, because uh, it's a very high density and uh, city and uh, represent a typical kind of development pattern in the, in, the, in the south part of China or also the nearby country and the region. So, so we will talk about what's the issue and what is the incentive. Then we are getting to what we have done and what kind of research area I and the other colleague are working on. I think this is an open end. And so at the end, we are introduced one of the recent projects and uh, conduct by me and my colleague to respond to some of the crisis and venture caused by the COVID. And uh, so I think the first thing, I think the no surprise, I think the climate challenge is a, is a, is a major issue. And uh, then the important, why is the challenging? Because I think that one problem is based on the IPCC AR6. I think it's, uh, it's really caused by the human activities, okay? I think, I think that's very clear. Eventually, about three, three weeks from today, I think I will be in the Lawrence Berkeley lab in San Francisco. I think we will continue to talk about this issue. About human activity, no doubt about it related to in this part of the 
of the of the planet. I think we talk about high density city and the mega city and the high rise tower and all these things uh, and uh, also a unique uh, economy uh, development pattern and uh, so 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 all these things trigger and uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, the, the, the the negative back about uh, to challenge our future living so we too uh, we very concerned about this issue eventually we do know something to be done and of course extreme weather pattern as it recently happened in us in other places also having hong kong eventually i, I see like this photo is not because this is very typical but the issue is that uh, this total of uh, this photo taken by the reporter at that time eventually that day i stay in the country park that means i stand underneath all this thunderstorm 2000 wave in the very short time so lucky enough i didn't get hit so i still can do the presentation today and uh, so of course we have a very strong weather pattern. So what do we respond? Okay, and uh, because I think all this background, everybody definitely know it. So I very quickly just uh, give a highlight. And uh, on the same time, of course, we Hong Kong also have the uh, rapid aging and the rapid uh, urbanization process in this region. That's another reason. So so how do we respond? Hong Kong do have a so-called action plan. Okay, a Hong Kong climate action plan. And the, why I want to introduce it because I could push it, just like uh, other country in this region, uh, like uh, China Garden or the, the Guangdong has uh, their action plan. And that definitely affect how do we consider what's the future of our city, what's the economy, what's the living environment, what's the, what's the, the, the how do we strike the balance with our natural resource. That become very challenging. And uh, of course, and uh, we have a limited of land. That's the important issue. I think we can talk about planning, urbanism, land is always a challenge, okay? And of course, uh, we go for high density, but we do look into uh, from various aspects, what we should pay attention to, okay? So of course, it's very big uh, and uh, skeleton based. And, but uh, we have to create an imprint in this region, not only for Hong Kong, for the Greater Bay Area of uh, China, that is a major GDP. So we do think about one thing very challenging for our future planning, the building design is the uh, carbon neutrality. I think based on the introduction, you know, I also lead the Green Building Council and uh, currently I'm the chairman. And so how to reduce, we, we know we have to reduce the carbon emission, okay? We also know we are, we are transforming our energy type, but then no matter what our behavior affect energy usage, and the, why we have this behavior, we are caused by our cities sometimes, caused by our building design, caused by a lot of elements associated with our professional discipline. So we do, including transportation and all the things. So we think you need to be pushing by this factor. Another thing, we also understand, we have to really do some changes and really know what the, the potential impact during the early days of concept in the planning stage. Okay, I think this diagram have a different way to draw it, but uh, I think we do understand as long as we can have a much better prediction and that we are more comfortable about our decision, about planning and the design, we can have a better chance to don't make a major mistake. Okay, if I don't say we do the correct thing. So, so in this case, you know, we do have a chance to demonstrate and uh, because the Hong Kong development, I think you know, we always land at the Hong Kong island. So in this case, also we are adjacent to the, the mainland. I think the red dot is Hong Kong, the whole area. The, all the purple dot are different major city in the, the, in the, uh, the, the, the Greater Bay Area in Guangdong. It's uh, the, including Shenzhen, Guangzhou, all the major economy and uh, combined with the whole area of this uh, economy base is a uh, is very strong. It's, uh, it's over a lot of countries uh, overall GDP. GPD. So so in that case, I, all these city may be still pursue to certain kind of economic growth. Also, the, in that case, because the population growth. Then mainly, if you see the picture you see, I show here the map. That's a, that's about the we call the Greater Bay Area, and that's about more than seventy million people who live here. And eventually, size is not is, is, is not that really not that big. Okay, so 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 in that Hong Kong is part of it. How can we, you know, and uh, we we can deal with if you see on the on the PPT, you can see some of the population and the economy figure. And uh, so and so so in that case, how to strike the balance? Also, we know 
will grow. So on the same time, how do we plan? We have to know what any decision making, what will be the consequence. Also, we have to know what's the potential, okay? And what's the problem already happened, okay? So, oh, sorry. And so in this case, Hong Kong, this is a Hong Kong's map. You also can see from this map, Hong Kong's population really only happened for the lower part. They didn't get Hong Kong Island as a Kulung. We know it's not, even we go for TOD like uh, Singapore and uh, based on the, it's a very true believer. It's a railway transportation, all the things. I believe a lot of you visit Hong Kong before, but we still need to really to think about what's the relationship and how can we redevelop as a new type of city to represent Hong Kong's future for next century. Okay, so, so in that case, we have one project for Northern Metropolis. Why I introduce it? Because I can later part of the PPT will introduce a lot of the things we are doing, try to, try to predict, try to understand, and the rules will try to make our decision more comfortable. And also as a continuity about a lot of planning and the urban design strategy. So urban part of slides is the Northern Metropolis. So in this case, this area is very beautiful. It's full of a wet land. Then we have a water bay nearby sea bay. There's a double one in the Shenzhen Bay. Nearby, beautiful. They don't introduce this ocean issue. Then how do we do it? Because currently we target there will be 2 million people will be in this region. So that will totally transform the center of Hong Kong. Also transform, uh, uh, we have to come up a new type of city because we do love our country park. We do love the water, bay, the, the sea bay we have. But now we have to strike the balance. What we can do and also the lifestyle because our population is not young anymore. We all have more than, we have more than around 25%. We are senior. So what kind of the future space we are provide to them? So this is the general map. And uh, currently I'm uh, lucky uh, that in certain degree, I also involved to, to a lot of debate what we should do. And also including, we have to consider the seasonal, seasonal bird. They will fly for the northern part of the mainland all the way go to the wetland of Hong Kong. It means stay in this area. So we have the bird as also as a residence, okay? So what do we can think about it? Our natural resource issue and also economy issue. We find your this diagram show they want to create a certain kind of ring for all kind of activity. So this is on the photo, okay? And we have a high density in the south part of China. We have a typical satellite city. We do have the wetland, okay? So in this case, we also have another person. Today, I won't talk about that more. That even more endeavor will do a major bit and the more than thousand uh, the, the hectares, uh, uh, the new island, the uh, artificial island in the bay. So in that case, that the middle part of the picture. So in that case, okay, so what will be the community? And a lot of issues. Okay, so, but today we think now the government with more emphasis about Northern metropolis. okay? So, how do we drive it, okay? Before we talk about planning, we never can forget the one thing in this region is finance, okay? The Hong Kong is a global finance center, the, the third ranking number three around the world. So in that case, we do think about how to strike the balance between sustainable development and the finance. So we do have green finance, okay? Now in the bus world, around the world, investment, green bonds. But we do wish to use a better control integrate with the land development and the planning and the green building. Of course, I'm the chair of the green building. And uh, so how do we, but what do we have to know? The things we are doing is correct. Of course, now we have a ESG, so we do respect SDG out of those should be considered. So the important things, we want to enhance the health and safety. The, and uh, the disabilities of our council and uh, to do, uh, we, in, in the, the bottom of the day is so response to climate change. Okay, that's the beginning of slide because we do know that the, the city need to do. So we do want to generate different kind of type of bond. Okay, now we do have it. I won't get into this detail because today we have, uh, uh, we are not for this. But uh, I wish people to think about when we transform, it's not when we stay in. Then exactly we have to operate another domain in this one is a finance domain. Okay, mm -hmm. of course we have a government as a policy domain. So it's very tricky. That's why I say, motor domain is like a motor discipline because then only when other domain sharing the value what we are doing otherwise it's very difficult okay i can tell you one interesting example 
If you go to talk about ESG and the green, green bonds domain, the green building assessment scheme is not a typical way of talking about bring, lead, all the, we call Hong Kong Bing Plus, all the, the, the China uh, green building assessment scheme. No, they don't use it. They use their own, created by the fin uh, financial expert. I'm really shocking a few years ago when I learned that, but I haven't changed it. So, so, so in any case, you will find out they really have a very different picture in their mind. Okay, so later we'll talk about that issue. But that is very important. This picture to show is how much financial investment already lined up with what we're trying to do, okay? The green. So for the Greater Bay Area, we do have a target, okay? Eventually this um, uh, bilingual. So the target, big part of it, including a water system, air quality system, carbon neutrality, in the green building, good neighborhood, livability, eco protection, and the conservation. You know, the typical thing, you know, but how to implement that? That becomes also first we need to what's the sensitive area. So there are a lot of challenges related to how to reach this goal, but the investments there and also become bigger and bigger. Okay, so 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 that's why and that is the one way. And uh, to, we try to integrate with the different domains experts to work together to achieve a sustainable future through planning, design, construction, operation, and all the life cycle considerations. And so in this case, you know, that's a amount. Okay, sometimes I always think about trillion. How many zero I have in trillion? Okay, that's the situation. Okay, because uh, that is uh, also we are really trying to implement that. And the, but the issues we try to push, no matter at the community level, the building level, and something to reflect the goal, reflect the end, I just mentioned, also try to solve our problem. And also we think about sustainable asset, okay, in the green. And also in Hong Kong, we do know we have some kind of pattern, we want to change it. And because our building, the building industry, okay, building industry eventually also go to the earth, the, the city. So we do contribute more than 60% of the carbon emission. Okay. So we have to find a new way to think about our city. Okay. So in this case, we look into ESG consideration, this criteria, and we do have it. And uh, so, so we have to do many things. We have to engage green track. Okay. So if this is the background, we want to have a new city because that's a need and we need to link it. We want to demonstrate what the Future. We do have a financial industry in different discipline. We do also have a climate challenge. So how do we implement that? So in the past, I think that some of my friends know, I always use this slide to introduce a general concept of what we are doing. We do think about performance base is important. But then we have ability to predict, to identify the problem and by scientific means. Okay, doesn't mean we have to do design fully scientifically, but we have to know, we have to be able to to know the problem, how to optimize. Okay, optimize is important because our density is different. Our land is really limited. Every part of the, the component need to be harmony together. Otherwise create the disaster in a very high density context. So, so, so we do talk about wind environment, heat environment, green coverage. We use the satellite, use the simulation. So I want to introduce something we have done in the past few years. Then we talk about what we are doing now. Okay, so this is something we, we always talk about land use, land change, carbon. So that, that, that we very much that in the past few years, we already begin to monitor it in the Greater Bay Area, what will be the green coverage, okay? And uh, so, so eventually the red color means the coverage more and the, the, the but so, so we want to understand how this thing has been happened in the Greater Bay Area. For example, then we can do the prediction model about the heat. We also look into Hong Kong. Hong Kong, we do a lot of urban renew and eventually new town. When we do that, eventually we restarted, really we really change our land coverage. Sometimes there's a certain moment, you have become the kind of brown land, the temperature go, but how much reco recovery process you did in the effort that we plant the tree, doing the park, generate a new green bell. And so we really monitor that, okay? And on the same time, we look into industrial land use development. Okay, so because I can see, you can see quickly, quickly economy grows. Okay, all the waterfront of the Pearl River near the harbor become containable. 
become a lot of like even for the power plant. Okay, the new the, no matter nuclear or other energy sources, most of the power plant now occupy a waterfront. Okay, so in that that create a kind of very unfriendly uh, factor to our existing urban content. Okay, then we also monitoring the these data acquisition and about different kind of new tasks in this case in Hong Kong how the land has been reused and also changes through time. And so we can think about what kind, based on the, the record of the planning, the urban, so what kind of decision really generate positive or negative effect? And what's the incentive when we keep in finance or in other things, what we are doing? So this is showing one of the district and uh, eventually we, a lot of this one, we have the paper, if you in the audience be interesting, we can, we can show with you what we are doing and what is the observation. Then on the same time, okay, all the district and also talk about and uh, other kind of uh, effect. And we also look into because we are located because south because all the GBA area, including Hong Kong, we have a lot of you know the hillside and the slope side. So in that case, we use the X band uh, radar as a satellite surveying to know an eco settlement. Because sometimes we always say, when we look at the land, we think the land will forever like that. Eventually, don't. Unfortunately, not. Nah. Sea will always also change. So when sea water change, also when you have new development, they have an even settlement. Eventually, the whole environment is changing, but the very subtle. Our eye cannot see that. Okay, that creates environmental disaster, our safety consideration. Water, okay? When we build a city, we always think, that, for example, nearby the ocean, one potential danger is we always think the water never change. Unfortunately, it changed, it changed very badly. Okay, so eventually that's the monitoring about the Shenzhen River and uh, how it changed related to the activities. Of course, wind simulation, okay, when we build a city, we don't have enough wind. I think some of my, my friends in the Eiffel, those you know, I did a lot since many, about almost 30 years ago. So to do the wind study and the simulation, lighting, urban lighting environment, when we do urban renew, is the density never go down, density always go up, okay? How do we maintain a good light sunlight, the solar access, okay? So the senior people always living in the area, when they walk out of their home, they still can enjoy the natural lighting. Okay, that's very important, okay? So, so, so I think we think governing the right, okay, for a good environment. Okay, so, so this is something we want to, oh, now we generate a lot of building regulation, code and planning, including like a ventilation, this one. We do have a air ventilation assessment system. We do have other things to consider. Okay, heat, okay. Use the, the long wave for the summer environment to study the, 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 the issue. Eventually that's the photo we took in from my previous university, Chinese university. And I'm still the emeritus professor there. When I go back, I think about, oh, what's the heat point, okay? So how that affect us, how the park affect people's comfort. And of course, and after all this, all the wind and then all the heat and building time do related to infectious disease. Unfortunately, create a kind of a, the same issue. So this is the, about 20 years ago when we have a start. This is my research for Amoy Garden. Then the, the report sent to the uh, World Health Organization, not WHO, WHO, okay, sorry. And so this is the, in, in the lab, we do this uh, testing and how do we solve the problem and eventually in order to, 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 to change the flow pattern or the high rise building block in the urban area to protect, the, to provide the, the healthy environment to our high density residents in the city, okay? And uh, on the same time, we also try to apply the, 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 the uh, this kind of exercise, getting to one new town planning at that time to learn the, 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 how to do it. So that time we did is the Digital Sunshine is a one area in the middle part of the Guangdong Primacy and about 100 kilometers away from Hong Kong. And the, the experiment site is a 23.8 kilometers square. Okay. And uh, so uh, that's about 2000, uh, yeah, 2,300, yeah, 2,300 hectares, okay. So the whole area, then that's a sketch, that time we work with the Stuga, with the Professor Abler. And so this is the ending, it's the end outcome like this, is a, is a, is one. But when we generate, we do use 
a lot of what we call the high resolution climatic data, wind simulated data. We study the sea land effect of the wind when it's sitting nearby the sea coast. And we do all this analysis. We use the, the, the mid scale um, uh, climate simulation to study different kind of density trans, uh, allocation of all the building, how the urban temperature will be changed before we build the city. And so we can control the land density and also the wind pattern. So this is the wind pattern. That time we study about the, the thing. So that's why we rotate the urban grid. The grid will rotate 18.5 degrees, okay? In order to best to get the enough sun shading during the summertime when people walk on the street and also collect the seasonal wind or sea land effect so the people have a breeze and also under the shade. That's very important for a city in this area. But we done that in based on all the simulation we did, so we can optimize the comfort. Okay. On the same time, we can control and study about green coverage. How can we maintain a green? Where will be the we call the eco sensitive area? And so, so to do that, and also nearby. Then after that, of course, generate different kind of area. I think we are in a lot of us in planning, so we know. The land puzzle, we generate a diagram about how do we draw an urban grid, development grid, the wind corridor, the, 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 the view, and the transportation. So in deep each area. And so we generate, we do the green infrastructure. Then we generate green infrastructure, that we think about we can do it. We based on all this analysis, we create the green and the blue infrastructure plan, including the waste management plan. Okay, together. So this is the model when you go to the they have a planning discussion hall. So this is what has been done, okay? And this photo is about five, uh, four years ago already, okay? And uh, and why I get this photo, you find the button photo is because my student, my former student, when they get married, they have a wedding photo taken in front of this, this small pavilion of all these artificial lakes and also the natural lake. They find it's very beautiful. They say, uh, Professor, do you know where it is? I say, I know because I did it because when we do the planning, we do the water system first, even before we build anything. Okay, so after that, now we talk about even for the northern metropolis. Do you remember we have a, a lot of wetland, we have a water base. What are other things we have to understand? How can we, based on what I just described, go one step further? Okay, because when we study the city in this, we know most of the major city, mega city nearby the waterfront. But the important thing, we seldom to interact with the ocean. So this time we think we, we need to have a, something can do coastal ecosystem protection and also related to blue carbon. carbon. Because blue carbon capacity, you, we all know typically about five times of the forest, okay? So how do we do it? So we consider about a wetland area, the coastal eco ecosystem area and how that will happen in the nearby. So of course, we do work with the, the discipline in the ocean scientists and also other people and the, to generate based on that they have the survey. Eventually Hong Kong is very rich in the, in the marine life, okay? But I believe nobody knows. If you are the tourist come to Hong Kong, you see it's the urban, okay? So, so in that case, we talk about the coral community. We have a strong coral community. So we do have the, the survey so we're currently be, be working with the with the marine key, uh, marine laboratory key lab okay so we do have the the underwater farm we call the purchase strawberry okay bring the strawberry underneath the sea nearby the bay okay so so in that case we can understand what's the life form okay so, so eventually also create a three-dimensional underwater the ecosystem map okay and on the same time, we train our young generation, okay? But at that time, how that related to our thing? So eventually we create, a, we call the, eventually you see the right-hand side is the map. We create one called data fusion. Using the data fusion to create all kinds of data, measurement data, satellite data with the multi-spectrum and based on different temporal to understand, you know, what is the changes, okay? So in order to, so this is the, the, the enhanced RC map of data fusion. That's a very important aspect. And so in this data fusion, we can begin to optimize the image from different time because different things might have different spectrum, different resolution, but they have a different kind of uh, important natural resource information of land use information. 
So we try to have a kind of algorithm. So we can generate very much like a data bank. In this big data system, we also make it available to the society. So then the society can use data bank to participate government's decision. But on the same time, they also can be can monitor. And uh, if they really come up something too greedy in economy, then eventually everybody will pay. Okay. So this is uh, about uh, the, the fields, the multi-source RS data, image database for platform for sustainable development. Okay, so this is a quite complicated system, including we also consider the sea level changes. And I would say sea level changes only because the flooding we cannot build. It's not true. When sea level changes, we lost the coastal marine life. Then eventually, that's a disaster. It's an eco disaster for all of us when we build city like that. So how can we maintain that? How can you have an eco, uh, uh, the, the, the skirt, okay? Like, a, like a, what is some of the, I think maybe you know, I think it's in, uh, in, the, in, 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 the, in Canada, okay? And uh, so of course, on the same time, consider COVID. We also consider environmental issues, how that relate to COVID, of course, we call psychological building. This is the, uh, done together with my, my 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 now is my is, is doctor right? she graduates uh, with uh, with uh, Myrna, uh, Dr. Myrna Zundek. Okay, so in that case, talk about research, behavior, and environment. Okay, so research typically have a uh, behavior map, and on the same time, now we try to combine with uh, big scale and simulation about the urban. So we find out in COVID after COVID, everybody very sensitive about the good air ventilation. Okay, so. So that's something we are doing and also further expanded as a behavior science, decision science, and also with the community and neighborhood based on what we have studied. So we try to link all these factors and based on the big, big, big database. On the same time, a couple of minutes we'll talk about data vision. But when we have a lot of data, you, you need to use your eye to classify. It's almost impossible. So we begin to divide a lot of work to really generate the neural net. To really use, it can take advantage of different kind of a resolution, uh, the 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 satellite image and also data acquisition image to really create a a, a, a integrated uh, a, a satellite image with the land use classification and this can be sensitive about certain kind of environmental factor. We can identify, for example, growth from the the space data, and so in this case everything is automatic and they get into the big database. So when we do the urban planning and design and a lot of this issue, we can use it as a platform to interact with the different domain experts based on different kind of this network depth analysis based on the pattern. And we also can based on the different kind of uh, cardinality, okay, can generate. So in that case, we can begin to discuss in a very open scientific platform. And so we also can do pattern generation. Okay, that means what we learn. You know, in this case, for example, you can see a landform, you also see in the building, and the building, eventually the window opening. In that case, you can regenerate. That means certain pattern maybe means something. So we try to explain to, to see this kind of, uh, and also in that case, we acquire the knowledge from the, from the other urban system research. The next part, system of the system, is the collaboration we have the Georgia Tech, okay? And uh, instead, and so in that case, this is the energy model Professor Perry Young did for the Tokyo. And so currently, we all have a strategic thing to get into urban data analytics, okay? To create a model. So this one is the urban model of Manhattan. Inside is the high and the width. They use the energy resilience ratio, okay? We call energy resilience because of the higher density. So after that, this is the Shenzhen campus planning. Okay, so we using this thing. And so, so of course we have a infrastructure network. So currently we're looking into this kind of research. So, so we also have a monitoring device because of, we, we really think about city, but you know, all the high rise building located in this area. Okay, and, uh, then, and we have more than 1000 super high rise, 1000, okay. So how we know it's safe? So we combine with the GPS and the slice line. We have the monitoring by the, where the same timing to control the radar's uh, crystal vibration. So in that case, we can monitoring all the vibration of many buildings on the same time under strong wind 
under earthquake or uh, under an ecosystem of land, and also monitoring the urban infrastructure, subway, the pipe system. Because we know if the urban infrastructure get into trouble, including, for example, tower, then even the whole city will be in trouble. So when we say we make a city resilient, it's very complicated. It's a complicated because there's a lot of other discipline need to have this data in order to is a major bridge. We can know the vibration exactly. We can detect when do the early warning. So in order to keep our city safe. So this is used in the satellite technology, radar technology, reflector technology, and also another big database. Okay, this is subway system. So when they have a depression because underground water changes for the complex system, then we can know there's something will happen. Okay, the heat. Okay. Last one I want to introduce it is the purchase mangas. So during at least showing at a different scale, okay? This is very high time. People say, oh, you do performance-based design, you have to have a high time. No, 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 no. Sometimes this is mangas. Eventually it's a, it's a DIY, negative pressure air shell device for senior health. Eventually, when during the beginning of this year, Hong Kong gets hit by COVID, very serious, because the elderly home is overcrowded. And another issue. That time we our whole medical system getting trouble. The elderly home have a difficulty to show. So we think we need to really prevent the elderly home in-house infection. So I take the volunteer group. So eventually we say, maybe we design something, apply what we know, but we use paper. Because paper that do DIY means if we every day we have a 50,000 cases, we have a a lot of senior citizens, unfortunately, they pass away. Totally, Hong Kong lost about 10,000 senior citizens in a very short period. So we cannot wait until ambulance comes. We cannot wait factory producer. We have to be able to do by ourselves, but they have to be reliable. So based on what we perform, based we have done during SARS, so all the research, so we generate, we have it, we begin to design something by paper. Everybody can do it, and the material can be fine on the market, but is a, the outcome is very straightforward. The thinking very straightforward, but the person we have to use, make sure it's very reliable. So we use a performance base, based on the data, we define the parameter, and this is a computational fluid dynamic model with all the data integrated into it and different kind of control parameter. Then, so we try to simulate many the day and the night and also cut the model. So we make sure when the senior has his shell, in a very crowded elderly home environment. They can be safe. And that they also can be, you know, temporarily treated until ambulance come. And the during peak period, you have to wait more than 36, maybe 36 to 48 hours before ambulance can come. During that moment, the, the virus will focus in the other. So this can control. And the we define, we also catch by use TV means we can trace a particle dynamic how the particle move, and so we can protect our senior, okay? So, so I can see performance-based and uh, evidence-based design. Is it can be as simple as like that to apply to a specific thing. And so the physical model, we do eventually the top pop mop up, and so eventually you, you can buy from anywhere. You even use the, 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 you use the paper box, and you use the simple thing to make a window, why they have a window? Because psychological reason. Why you have this angle? Because the senior when they lay down in our culture, they want to see outside. Otherwise, they feel they will be in a very bad shape. And so all the material can find from the street of Hong Kong. And so we do the experiment, take it one by one by one. Then this is the making. When we making this model, eventually nearby we have a shopping mall. No one people. It's whole empty in Hong Kong. So we make it. And we test it. We even make the video and they have a website and all the things. And so we make it available to the community. We also do a site survey in the middle of it. That's me. Okay, that time we really get into the all the things. It's a very difficult and tough situation. But we bring back the data, we do the simulation again, we do the prototype again, we change the design, we change the L filter, this unique plasma based filter, no filter needed. We call the filter without filter. Okay, and we do the simulation again because the change of the design configuration. We do the CO2 test to make sure the change the prototype with computer simulation with performance simulation all match. Then 
we go to where? When after a bit, we go to the before the Easter this year, we install the first group into the elderly home to help our senior and also with what volunteer student group. Okay, they have, we cannot provide insurance. I told them to volunteer because we really think we have to do it. And uh, so, so we did it and the invite square, because of the limit, I cannot show you the, the user's photo. Okay, so, so, so we do have a, a lot of uh, case feedback. Once we get the first feedback, we begin to change to meet with nursing group, healthcare worker requirement and all the thing and run the simulation, do the thing. Then of course, because this is your legal project, get a, quite a support from the Legislative Council of uh, Hong Kong. So, so in this case, currently most likely we are equip our elderly home, whole Hong Kong with this kind of device. Currently we are in person. Now we also work with the uh, one, uh, uh, the, 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 the how the, uh, the, the social welfare uh, foundation and the Shen Gong Hui is uh, from the church. And uh, so we do the things and modify and uh, we continue on it. Okay. So I think that this gives uh, some example what we are doing recently. And of course, I think the one important thing to do that we do also introduce to our students to study our urban environment. High rise. High rise is a very unique. Okay. That can create a lot of trouble. Yeah. So before the end of my talk, I think I always like this photo. This is the control, pan control panel of Apollo 4 and the space shuttle and the Dragon. Okay, so you can see the control panel becomes so simple, so human oriented. And uh, you won't see too much data. Okay, so I think the big data and also to learn from all the, through the AI thing to learn all these things is important. Because I think for the planning, we are really facing a lot of complexity. This complexity needs to be helped by different kind of other mechanisms and the system. So today I very briefly to introduce what has been done and what I'm doing and also my recent work. And uh, I'm quite um, um, happy to have this chance to share with all of you something maybe we can work together. And also maybe you are interesting to collaborate. We are quite open. At the same time, it's something I think it can be further improved. Also, I welcome your suggestions. And uh, thank you very much for the IFO committee. And thank you, uh, Carlos, and, uh, and can, can help me for the, this presentation. And uh, it's my, my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.